Hello, this is Mike, and welcome to BitFixer. Today we're going to try to fix my Commodore PET 8032 here. As you can see, there's a bit of a screen problem. So we'll go ahead and try to diagnose it and get that fixed. By the time I recorded most of the uh, video for this, this one, I realized it was uh, vertical, so I am sorry about that, <laughs> but I uh, hope you enjoy the repair attempt. So this is my PET 8032. It's the one I have commonly used uh, pretty regularly for a while and uh, up until putting it aside for a few months and after doing that uh, it does this. We do still get the beep but we get all sorts of junk on the screen. It's like flickering characters, some of the dots don't even look right. So the goal will be to figure out what's going on here. Um, an obvious place to look is the video RAM. So I'm probably going to start with that. And possibly also, I don't know, I don't think the character, I think the character ROM looks okay. These characters, some of these characters look intact, but others are not. Others are flickering. So, you know, we'll do our best. Let's see what's going on. Just starting with something simple. Um, I'm going to try piggybacking another 2114 RAM chip onto one of these uh, video RAMs. The 8032 has four of them right here in this computer. This one is socketed already, but I'm just going to try, just going to try piggybacking one at a time and see what it does, if it makes any difference at all. So let's turn this one on. And what do we have on the screen? So that looks definitely a big improvement. And I'm actually moving the chip here and glitches are happening as I move it. So I think that that chip is pretty suspect. I'm gonna try the other ones just to see if it does anything different. Just moved it up one, one to the next uh, RAM chip here. So let's try the same thing on this one. Try to narrow it down a little bit. Okay, and this one we definitely see the same issues. I'm just applying a little bit of pressure on that chip, and I don't see, I don't see anything changing in response to what I'm doing here. So. This chip is probably not the, not the issue. And it appears to be the same thing with the bottom chip as well. And, and the socketed chip, I can just try replacing it and see if it does anything. But I am pretty suspicious of that first chip we tried. I'm just going to replace the socketed chip and then if that doesn't do anything, then I'm going to remove and socket the one I'm suspicious of, and we'll see what happens. All right, that chip is now socketed. Where is it? Here it is. And I put the same chip back in. I'm just going to start it up and make sure that it does the same thing it used to do. And uh, after that, we'll swap in another chip. I don't know. See what happens. All right, that looks about the same. I don't see the same flickers as before. But let's uh, swap in another chip and see what it, difference it makes. So when I was looking for replacements for the 2114, I was lucky enough to have this board. This is a Herco 16K memory board from an unknown computer system. This was in the this was in the free parts bin at a recent VCF West show. So I grabbed this and it's entirely populated with 2114. So I went ahead and borrowed one of these and we'll see if it works to fix the 8032. So a different chip is in. I know this one is good. Let's give it a shot. All right, look at that. It looks like it is totally fixed. All right, well, it's a pretty short 
fixed there, but sometimes it happens that way. We just had a bad uh, RAM chip in the, in the for the display RAM. Okay, that's a 2114. And uh, I guess it is interesting to see that that piggyback technique actually can help you identify uh, the problem sometimes. It usually, uh, you know, I guess in principle the, the chip that's on top is supposed to override the signals from the failing chip and uh, it seems like it pretty much did that so um, I don't think you want to do it for very long. You might have issues with uh, current on the pins, something like that. I'm not exactly sure but I, I wouldn't leave it on there very long but look at that we have a working 8032 now. Thanks for watching this very quick repair attempt on the uh, Commodore PET 8032. Hope you enjoyed it and if you uh, liked the video please feel free to subscribe. See you next time.